Hello guys and welcome to another PowerPoint tutorial. In this video, I'll show you a creative way to use animation triggers to present your text-based presentations. Starting with a blank slide, the first thing we are going to do is add a background picture. So let's head to the view tab and enter the slide master view. Here we can see the office team slide master. So let's preserve this and insert a new slide master. Now delete all the layouts except the blank layouts. Then delete all the slide elements in the blank and master layouts. Now let's insert a picture. You can insert your picture from various sources. I'm just going to paste the picture from my clipboard. Okay, let's proceed by animating the picture. So head to the animations tab and add a go shrink animation. Then enter the effect options and start the animation automatically. Increase the duration. Loop the animation until the end of the slide. Reduce the size of the effect. Add a smooth start and smooth end to the animation and check the auto reverse option. If you are new to PowerPoint and PowerPoint animations, you should know that there are two animation panes, one in the slide master view and another in the normal view. Just so you know, all these customizations can be done from the normal view. However, for efficient slide design and customization, I recommend utilizing the master view for incorporating animated backgrounds. All right, let's continue designing our presentation by exiting the slide master view. Now that we're in the normal view, we can simply change the layout to our newly created layout. As you can see, it appears as though there are no objects on the slide. This is because there are also two selection panes in PowerPoint, one in the slide master view and the other in the normal view. Recall that we animated the picture. So let's confirm that the slide is indeed animated. Great. We can now proceed to design our slide. Let's start designing by inserting a rounded corner rectangle on the slide. I'll use these dimensions. Adjust the corner radius, then align the rectangle on the slide. Duplicate the rectangle, add to the rectangle section in the shapes group and insert this rectangle. Adjust the rectangle and align it on top of this rectangle. Also, ensure the corner radius matches the rectangle. Then select these two rectangles, head to the match shapes options and unite the shapes. Send the custom shape behind the rectangle. Now select both shapes and format them by switching from a solid fill to a gradient fill. Change the gradient type and the direction. Deleting these two gradient stops, then customizing the remaining gradient stops by changing their colors. Also, adjust the position of this gradient stop. Then remove the outline on both objects. Now, let's improve the design of the folder by adding an outer shadow to this shape. Okay, the folder looks good. Let's make it a single object by grouping both objects together. All right, we've created the folder. Let's proceed by creating a new custom shape for our text. So copy and paste this rectangle. Align to the top left of the slide. Let's increase the rectangle's dimension. Change the color of the rectangle and remove the shadow. To create a custom shape that looks like a file icon, let's insert a right angled triangle. Align it to the top right of the rectangle. Select the rectangle first, then select the triangle. Head to the Mesh Shapes options and click on Fragment. Delete this shape, duplicate the triangle, then select these two shapes and unite them. Now we can align the triangle to the top right of this shape and complete the design of the file icon by adding an outer shadow to the triangle. That's looking good. Let's proceed by inserting our text. You can insert a text box. I'm just going to paste my text from my clipboard. Then align the text box with this shape. Now select all objects and group them together. 
Let me adjust this a little bit. Okay. Align the grouped objects properly. Then duplicate the grouped objects. Ensure it's aligned properly. Select both objects, duplicate them, and ensure they are aligned on the slide. Then align these objects in the center and the middle of the slide. All right, we are done with the slide design. Before adding animations, let's open the selection pane. Rename this object. Bring it to the front. Then rename and reorder all the other grouped objects for easy navigation. Once you are done renaming the objects, select the grouped objects in this order. Then head to the Animations tab. Click this drop down menu. Select more entrance effects and add basic zoom in animations. Change the effects direction. Then add exit animations to grouped objects by selecting more exit effects and adding basic zoom out animations. Also, change the effects direction. Then open the animation pane. Select all the animations. Start them automatically. Reduce their durations. Then select the folder shape and add the Go Shrink animation to simulate a button click effect. Now, to get the desired animations, we will need to add four extra Go Shrink animations to the folder shape. Four of them for each of the zoom in animations and one for all the zoom out animations. So, add the Go Shrink animation to the folder shape four times. Then select all the Goshink animations, reduce their duration, enter the effect options, reduce the sizes of the effects, add a smooth start and smooth end to the animations, and check the auto reverse option. Now, to make the presentation interactive, we will need to trigger these animations with an object. In this case, we will use the folder shape. So, with the Goshink animation selected, Trigger them with the click of the folder shape. Then reorder the zoom in animation so that with the click of the folder shape, each of the file icons with our text zooms in. Then select all the zoom out animations and reorder them so that with the last click, all the objects zoom out. Lastly, select all zoom animations and align them with the Goshink animations by adding animation delays. All right, let's check it out on full screen. As you can see, the folder shape is clickable. And if you click on the folder, the first object zooms in from the screen center. And with subsequent clicks, the other object zoom in. If we click again, all the objects zoom out. And with the help of animation trigger, we can loop these animations until the end of time. There you go. That's a creative way to make your text-based presentations interactive and engaging in PowerPoint. If you like the tutorial, please support the channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing for more PowerPoint awesomeness. If you are interested in the tutorial slides, the links is in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.